Family Theater presents Robert Young and Hans Conried. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Hans Conried and Mary Ship in Cyrano de Bergerac. To introduce the drama, your host, Robert Young. Thank you, Gene Baker. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. They say that beauty is only skin deep. But ask the man or woman who lives with deformity and learn how much deeper goes the scar of ugliness. One of the greatest of human tragedies is to possess a soul that yearns to soar into great deeds of beauty, love, and daring, and is burdened by the cross of a misshapen body or an unattractive face. Edmund Rostand captured the heartbreak and personal triumph of such a man in his enduring drama, Cyrano de Bergerac. And it is with real pride that we present Hans Conried as Cyrano and Mary Ship as Roxanne in Cyrano de Bergerac. What a caricature of a cavalier am I. Drooping plume, cloak faded and rent, my faithful blade dulled and tarnished, and always my nose. Spell that nose in towering letters in your mind, for I am Cyrano de Bergerac. Yet, here in the convent park of the Ladies of the Cross, in the evening of my life, I keep an ancient tryst, remembering only the morning 15 years ago, and Aurora herself, in radiant splendor, a miracle of youth and love and gentleness, timeless, verdant to springtime. If beauty has a name, call it Roxanne. Roxanne, my sweet, sweet cousin. I loved her, I feared her, tried to make myself perfection in all things for her. Cyrano. Poet. Soldier, philosopher. My public, who acclaimed everything about me, but my nose. And then one night, in the theater of the Hotel de Bourgogne, I outdid even myself. What manner of creature is this that looks more like a clown than a man? Or is that your real nose? It is my true nose. So? Your courage does not equal the size of what you call a nose. Sir, you are the Vicomte de Valvey. I am. But what has that to do with your nose? I wish to introduce you to my glove. Oh. Oh. And next, my sword. Have at it, then. Oh. Oh, Valvey is uninspired. Merely to ask if this be my real nose, when he might have left more deathless prose. Such folly I allow my tongue, but no one else's. Who dares is dusted! Ah, Cyrano, your nose again. 
You made it your battle cry to Bess Valver. But I ask again, why Valver, a friend of the Comte de Guise? I saw his eyes once when he looked upon my cousin Roxanne in her box. Toad eyes. Watching, planning. Cyrano, you and Roxanne? Who else can the beast love but beauty? My friend, my friend. But she watched you just now, bright-eyed, eager. Now she watched Puncinello on a stick, ringing his tiny bells, fighting away his little life. Now she came to watch a play. She saw Punch without a Judy. Is this my Cyrano who speaks? The guardsman who fears no man, yet trembles before one slight girl? <laughs> tell her, friend. Tell her of your love. Now how tell her? In the Monsieur, words... Monsieur de Bergerac. Yes, Porter. Uh, a lady, monsieur. To see me? Monsieur de Bergerac? Roxanne's duenna. I bring a message for you, monsieur. We oh. wish to meet with you in private. Roxanne? Ask for me? Where? When? We attend Mass at St. Roche tomorrow at dawn. Perhaps shortly after. Oh, yes, yes, but, but where? Roganos is close by. Rogano, an understanding friend, yes. Where, uh, monsieur? Uh, Rogano's pastry shop on the Rue Saint Honoré. We shall be there at seven. Au revoir, Monsieur de Bergerac. She wants to see me. Roxanne asks to look upon Cyrano. Not so bitter, hopeless, melancholy now. Now, Lebray. Now am I a mountain, a thunderous sky unleashing its lightnings. Too strong to duel with men. Bring me gods. I ask for gods, they send me devils. <laughs> no devils but friends, Cyrano. It is Liniere, the worst for wear, as usual. Oh, Liniere, that poor, bad poet. <laughs> he writes no better than he drinks. Cyrano, Liniere is in great danger. Oh, danger from creatures of the bottle? <laughs> no, 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 no. Christian told me, friend Christian, a hundred men are going to foully murder me tonight. One hundred <laughs> men for you? Come now, Liniere. It's true, Cyrano. Merely because I wrote a wrong poem about the right people. I died tonight on my way home. A hundred to one, Cyrano. <laughs> Let me come home with you. <laughs> Only one hundred? And you yes. would hide under my cloak? Frankly, yes. <laughs> Cyrano de Bergerac will see you safely home, my friend. Cyrano, there will be trouble. Oh, did I not ask for it, Lebré? Take torches, lanterns, for tonight, Cyrano has challenged the gods. Friend Rarano, prince of bakers, peasant of titled blood, greetings of the dawn and all things new and good. Hail, Cyrano! <laughs> I've come to meet a friend, a dearest friend. Ow. Oh, a lady? Oh, an immutable flame, encompassing all passion, the best, the purest of loving. <laughs> uh, uh, coach is stopped. Two ladies step forward. Oh, dear heaven. Uh, you, your friend? No, please, Ragnar, oh, leave us alone. Uh, of course, you know. Uh, good luck. Uh, now, may a life's prayer be answered. Madame, I salute. you. Oh, Roxanne, Roxanne. Cyrano. Oh, what sweet whisper from heaven prompted you to remember me, to ask to see me. First, to thank you, dear Cyrano. You? Thank me. For besting Valver yesterday. <laughs> you have not changed one whit, Cyrano. <laughs> remember when we were children? Oh, how well I remember those golden summers that brought you to Bergeron. <laughs> Even then you were making swords out of reeds, frowning so fiercely as you challenged birds and butterflies. And you wove flowers for a fragrant crown. <laughs> Did you love me then, Cyrano? What? <laughs> was I that ugly? You? You? Ugly? Ever? <laughs> then call ugly the newest, smallest star twinkling in the blue robe of the sky. Then call ugly the first tender blush of springtime blossoming. Even as a little boy, you had the gift of casting a spell with words. You were always different. Roxanne, you... You wish to tell me something? Yes, I... How does one say it without your gift, Cyrano? I must pronounce it simply. I am in love. Roxanne. But the one I love does not know. 
perhaps he dares to guess. Oh, I know he loves me. I have seen it in his eyes. Oh. He longs to tell me, but dares not. Such a brave man, too. A guardsman. My regiment, Roxanne. Young, noble, and so handsome. Oh. Handsome? He has been at the theater every night for the last two weeks. Not to see the play, but me. Oh, Cyrano, how he watches me. Tell me, am I bold? To love. To know that you are loved in return. Not bold, Oxane. But blessed. His name. Christian, the Baron de Neuviette. Protect him in your Gascon regiment, Cyrano. They quarrel with anyone of other blood. You ask me to protect your Christian. For the sake of our childhood. For the... Very well. You will never let him do it? Never let him do it. Oh, thank heaven. Tell him to write me. Now I must go. Oh, Cyrano, I do love you. As a friend. As the dearest of friends. Adieu, adieu. Farewell. Farewell, my heart. What noise is this? Cyrano, your guardsmen are outside and with them, the Comte de Guiche. Oh, oh, yeah. Monsieur de Bergerac, I was told of your prowess in the street last night. Your second starring performance of the evening, was it not? If you can call the first the disposition of Vicomte de Valvera a performance, your grace. The guardsmen are excellent in such things. Swordsmanship with poetry, an accomplishment. You might be amusing in my retinue. Yours? I might be persuaded to help your career. I ask no help. I'm as prodigal with my talents as is the sun with warmth, the clouds with rain. Cyrano, take care. And insolent as well. <laughs> Bergerac can well afford insolent with his talent for dueling. <laughs> Whoever hired those assassins for Lignere last night should feel robbed. Believe me, monsieur, I do. You? The Comte de Guiche? Feel the need to murder poets? Foolish poets who sing unwisely. Now, to be a poet is to be forever unwise, but it pays well in coin of truth, freedom to unmask the hypocrites in high places. <sighs> we shall meet again, cadet. I eagerly await the time and place. Come, officers, we have some plans to form. Cyrano. We've done it now. But with a method, good friend Ragano. I thrive on hatred. I love to make an honest enemy. So? It is not you she loves. Oh. You read me better than I speak, Lebre. <laughs> you, sir, what is your desire? Behold, our recruit of the morning. The gentleman cadets, uh, I greet you. Uh, tell him how he may hope to act like a Gascon in a thousand years, Cyrano. <laughs> In a thousand years, he will learn. <laughs> Raganov, what have you been doing? Recruit, uh, you are addressing me? Of yes. course. To offer advice, whatever else you say to Bergerac, never mention his nose. <laughs> his nose? <laughs> it is large. To voice it is to die. Yes, but why? A Norman would not understand. Yes. No sense of taste, no courage. Yes. Normans are as much men as Gascons, men of courage. Uh, Forget this fledgling recruit. Come, Cyrano, your story of the hundred and one. Yes, our story. <laughs> the story, gentlemen. It's nothing new. I would have done the same for you. <laughs> so Normans have no courage, eh? I was walking home, my friends. That was all. Of course, we had heard we might be waylaid, and many followed to see the plot. With us toward the dreadful spot. Then stepped behind night's curtain of cloud. You could not see beyond your nose. What, what is that? And... Who is this? A new recruit. I'll season him fast enough. Christian de Neuviette. De Neu black. All was black as I marched on, thinking of fate's prank. How I must offend a drunkard who wrote the wrong song each time he took a... Snootful. <coughs> took an idea. Why should Bergerac be the one to pay? Through the nose. Mobbler, out of here, all of you! Leave me alone with this, this recruit! Go, all of you, quickly! Huh. 
And now you intend to kill me? I'll argue that. Uh, my heaven, you have courage. Handsome, too, as she said. She? Who? Roxanne. Roxanne? She loves you. You love her. I know all. I'm her cousin. Cousin? Oh, oh forgive me, sir. I, I did not know. I, I only sought to prove my courage with those cadets. No, forget them. She expects a letter from you. She... Ex I... Oh, oh, no. You cannot write? I, I have no wit. I mean... I am a soldier, Cyrano. Have no art with women. Save only to look at one woman. That was enough. But if I had your tongue, your pen... Uh, then, Cyrano, your eyes, your nose. <laughs> but wait. Perhaps together we can win, Roxanne. I, I do not understand. My leather heart under your velvet, Christian. It is you she loves. My ghost will give you tongue and letters, too. <laughs> Call her, Christian. Do and dare. I'll stand here under the balcony, out of sight. Very well. Roxanne. Roxanne. Try a few pebbles on her window. Yes. She must speak to me tonight. Roxanne. Who calls me? It is I. Christian, is that you? I... I... At least say yes. Yes. Roxanne, I... I love you. And I love you. If you could know how I treasure your letters. Christian... My letters. I keep them ever close. Oh, speak on, my love. I... I, I do love you. Yes, you said that. I do love you. And after that... I love you more. Oh, no. Is that all you can say, Christian? But, but, but I do love the you. The night is growing cool. I'll go inside. No, no, wait. Your beauty warms the air, Roxanne. Its brilliant fire reaches me here. Can you not share your own gift? My gift? What do you say, Christian? Cyrano, what are you doing? Christian, what is it you were saying? I, I could not speak too clearly. The thunder in my heart enough to burst yes, it. Yes, yes, go on. Yet, what love destroys, love can make whole again. With bits of heart left over to form words, like birds flying to the nest of your divine beauty. I'll welcome these heart birds of yours and keep them safe and warm. Oh, they'll grow to shining, splendid things, nurtured on love, with pinions strong enough to fly the world. Challenging the vaulted sky itself. Your voice, it is different. Wait, I shall come down. No, no. So strong a no imprisons me here. Uh, allow me my moment, Roxanne, when I'm only a voice and all else is shadow, anonymity. Oh, prince of shadows, I love you. No laughter now, no friendship. Huh? Strange new voice I'd follow to the ends of the world. Oh, love. Take my joy to make you more joyful. Let my heart beat as your own. I love you, love you. I am yours. What can death hold for me now? One kiss. What? You fool. Only one kiss, beloved. The, the seal of passion on a promise. Eternal circle of timeless meaning and ancient knowledge. Come then. Drink deeply of that knowledge. Go then, Christian. Place your seal of passion on my promise. But Cyrano, dare I... Climb the balcony, ape. Roxanne. I, I come. Ro Roxanne, I... Christian. And Cyrano. A skeleton at the feast of love. Roxanne and Christian loved and were wed. Then came the siege of Arras, 
and we all marched away. But again, I wrote Christian's letters to Roxanne, his last letter. I thought then, perhaps, but <laughs> even death had a last grim laugh at my expense. Roxanne came here to live at the convent, and ever since, I pursued my wooing by bringing her gossip of the world. Once a week, I've come. Cyrano, dear friend, late for the first time in 15 years. I entertained a, an unexpected guest. A welcome guest? Sometimes of late, I think so. But you did come. That is the important thing. The gleaming needle in your delicate fingers spins a beautiful web, Roxanne. Cyrano, my dear, my dear. Roxanne, pray for me tonight at Vespas. <laughs> Cyrano, what is it? Nothing, merely my old wound from Arras. We all bear wounds of Arras. Mine bleeds within my heart. I bind it with his last letter. My letter? What? May, may I read it? It is growing dark, but here. <laughs> Beloved Roxanne, adieu for a little while, my heart, because today I die. The dark angel has touched me, and there is little time to tell of my love for you that, like the shining splendor I foretold, grows and grows and grows. The way you read it makes his love live again. I remember the languid hand of you pushing a heavy lock of bright hair from your fair brow. The eyes of you, so pure, radiant with heaven light. All these things I remember as my soul sobs adieu. Roxanne. Why, it is too dark for you to read. Farewell, my other heart, my dearest secret treasure, my beloved. Too dark, and yet you know the letter. I, I, All these years, it was always you. No, no I should have known. No. The very way you speak my name, the letters, no. the voice in the dark, the soul. All you. I knew he'd come here. He'd kill himself to keep his tryst. Oh, gentlemen. Hogano, oh, le break, like two old hens with an ailing chick. <laughs> chick, indeed. A foolish old cockerel. But, le break, why are you here? What happened? Not two hours ago, a footpad dropped a heavy log on Cyrano's pate. Oh, no. He will not live out the hour. Oh, stop blubbering, Baker. Oh, Cyrano. <laughs> You will not die. I love you. <laughs> no, no, that is not the plot. Beauty could change the beast by those enchanted words, but never see her know. All, this, all your life, my fault. Your fault, dear love. All down the empty, echoing corridors of the years. Your face, your voice, your grace to guide me. Cyrano, my friend. Cyrano, Cyrano. How can you drink with such a beaker? No fear of drowning. My love, my love. Farewell, my other heart. Dearest secret treasure. No, no, not lying down. Cyrano. Stand back. My visitor approaches. Let him find me ready and waiting. Dear, my dear. Now, now he attacks. He and the others. You see them? One hundred to one. Have at me if you dare. Take, take all else if you must, but one plume I keep to wear into eternity. Unsullied by the world, by even my ugly face. Cyrano, your beautiful face. Watch that. My prayer is answered. I rise again. Fight again. Alone. 
and free for love. Family Theatre listener once asked us how we manage to present such a variety of plays week after week and always end with the same theme, family prayer. Well, here's the secret, if it can be called a secret. There isn't a thing in life that doesn't somehow tie in with the family, that isn't somehow of interest to it, because the family is the basis of all society and civilization. Whether it's baseball or babies, railroads or religion, it's connected with the family, and our family theater audiences like to hear about it. In the same way, there isn't a thing in life that isn't connected with God, who created and sustained the world and all that is in it. So it's never an effort to introduce the thought of prayer, family prayer. After all, do we possess anything that doesn't come from the hand of God? And isn't it only sensible that we should pray together as a family for the graces we need each day? That's why we leave you each week with a thought we'd like you to make your own. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater is brought to you Hans Conried and Mary Ship in Cyrano de Bergerac with Robert Young as your host. Others in our cast were High Aberback, Bill Johnstone, Jay Novello, Bill Boucher, Edgar Barrier, Ted Osborne, Howard McNear, and Veronica Pataki. Edmund Rostand's classic was adapted by Virginia Cook with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman who was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Delvalle. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Ricardo Montalban and Marshall Thompson in Joaquin Murrieta. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is heard throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.